Today, I'm going to be showcasing my new boost system I have come up with in Trail Makers. So when I'm talking about boosts, I am referring to like nitro boosting, like just a whole bunch of speed with a press of a button. Basically, you just you press a button and then you get all this thrust out of nowhere. So you can see this car here. This is just a, a normal car with the raw jets on the back. So this is what we already have in Trail Makers. There's nothing wrong with these blocks. They're quite good. They actually have a lot of power, 750 power to be precise. It's just that these are quite chunky. It's not always the best option for boost. And there's no way of controlling how long the boost lasts for. Because if I do the boost with these, it runs out pretty quickly. And there's no customization option there for me to change how long the boost lasts for. But, you know, for a boosting jet, it, it does the job. But the reason I'm making this video, because I have a lot of experience playing GTA. I used to play a lot of GTA back in the day. Mainly GTA 5 Online with all of the crazy vehicles they have on there. But there's just something about the boosting in GTA 5 I really enjoy. So to demonstrate my boosting technology, I have a few builds here. We're going to pull out the first one, which is a car. This is heavily inspired by one of those cars of GTA 5 with the crazy boost features, like the Scramjet, for example. If you guys have played GTA 5 before, you know what I'm talking about. But let me showcase this boost. So this boost, I do have it set to 5 seconds. I can change how long I want the boost to go for. But let me just show you the difference. So we're driving normally and then boost. So much more power. Look at that. I'm still going. This boost just feels really, really powerful. And you know what? I can even hold my boost if I wanted even more boost and to be less temporary, I guess. But I'm flying. Oh, we're smashing into mountains. Yeah, so if I boost look, I get a five second boost stream with all that power. I also have some sound blocks in there, of course, to simulate. I don't know, just, just thrust. It is quite noisy, but I think it gives a really cool effect. I can control the car with my leaning and some gyros. And, oh, no, <laughs> we sank the car there. But I honestly think this style of making boost is super effective. I also have a jump feature, just like the scramjet in GTA 5, where I can jump and then boost. So I can get some serious airtime, jump over buildings and mountains and whatever. And I can just keep doing it. <laughs> I'm essentially just, just a flying car now. So how it works is I just press space once. I just press space, it does the boost, and then it resets. I press space again, and then it just boosts again. It's a little different to GTA 5 Online because you have to land again to do the boost. So, for example, you have to jump, boost, you've used your boost, and then your boost doesn't recharge until you've landed again. But in Trail Makers, it's, uh, it's a little rough when it comes to landing. Like, look at that damage I just suffered. Let's do a little bit of an experiment here. This is one of the highest points on this map. And I'm just going to just boost off. I'm going to jump, boost off as fast as I can. I want to see how much distance I get. Okay, let's boost. Jump. We're flying. Well, we're falling with style, I should say. Oh, okay, so we, d you know, we exploded on the landing, but we landed basically here where this ring of fire is. In comparison, let's pull out this uh, random vehicle I just strapped two raw jets to, and uh, let's, let's do the boost. This is just one boost, by the way. Oh, oh no. Okay. <laughs> I think having the boosts on the top of, are, you know, pushing the pushing the car down too. But, you know, they are very heavy too. So you can tell there's a lot of difference. But before I show you how I made this boost system, let me show you some other creations I have put this boosting system in. Okay, so here we have my next build. This is based off a real aircraft during World War II. And it's also in GTA Online. It is dubbed the LF-22 Starling in GTA Online. 
In real life, I don't actually know its real life counterpart. It might be a Messerschmitt. If someone in the comments can tell me what plane this actually is, that'll be awesome. But yeah, this is designed exactly how the boosting system would work for this plane in GTA 5. So if I press space, I do get a tiny bit of thrust, just enough to get the vehicle moving and taxiing, for example. We're gonna fall and, and glide here for a little bit. But if I activate the boost by pressing space, You can see how much speed we get. Now, this boost lasts way longer. I do have an accumulator on there, so you can see. Oh, we just broke the sound barrier. When it hits like 100% on the accumulator, that's it. I don't get any more boosts, but it does recharge. So you can see it's almost halfway recharged. When I press the boost again, it will continue from wherever it's left off. Oh, um, we left the map. <laughs> That's how quick we are. We left the map. Yeah, so here we go. All that really cool boost. We're going super fast now. Very fast. And then we're just waiting to run out of boost here. So we've ran out of boost. If I was to do it again, it would it'll only, you know, let me for a little bit because it still needs to recharge all the way. And again, this is exactly how it functions in GTA 5 Online. It recharges in the air whilst the boost is not being used. And that's just another way I've developed this system of boosting in a creation in Trailmakers. I will say there's a lot more freedom when it comes to boosting in a plane than a car. Because you just have all this control. You can just go anywhere you want, basically. Even though I'm not boosting right now, I'm still holding that speed. I'm holding a lot of speed. I also have some weapons on here, you know, in case I needed to shoot something. But yeah, we're still going. We're still going. We're still gliding. We're not even boosting and we're gliding. And we're going to boost right now. We're fully recharged. Three, two, one. Off we go. Let's, let's break that sound barrier again. <laughs> that is awesome. I know this vehicle is, doesn't break the sound barrier. Historically, it's never broken. It's not that fast. This is just trail makers. And there's a particular speed glitch I have used to help make this boosting system a lot more effective. But yeah, that is two builds I have used this boost system in. Now for our third and final build. If you haven't noticed already, all of the boosts behave a little differently due to how they're set up with logic. Next, we have this giant bomber. This is based off the GTA 5 Bombushka. So it behaves just like any other aircraft, really. You can taxi with it. You can do a normal takeoff. If I wanted to do a normal takeoff, I just ramp up the propellers and... Oh, no, there's not enough space. Uh, oh, you know what? We're good. Wow, we're so lucky. Put my landing gear in and then, yeah, we're good. We're, f we're flying now, so we're in action. The boost I have for this aircraft is called a Jato boost. Jato thrusters. And this is a real life thing. They actually do this to help aircrafts take off from shorter runways and stuff. They do this in the military. So let me showcase this Jato boost for you guys. All I need to do is press X. I have my boost for the Jato set up to X and let me show you how fast I can get my speed and take off. So here we go. Three, two, one. There we go. Just need to pull up now. Boost is still going. The boost is still going. And there we go. We're in the air. We've got some crazy height. The boost has run out now. There's no way of using it again. This one is designed not to recharge until you've basically landed. But yeah, this this is the Bombushka with the Jato Thrust. Just a little showcase on how it performs. It is a bomber. I do have the bomb base installed on this. Look at that. Loads of bombs. Super cool. We also have a, uh, a turret on the top. Got some cool sound effects. Shoots a little slower than a normal uh, blaster would. Oh yeah, and there's also a large cannon under the nose look. So if I wanted to use that too, that's also an option. But yeah, that is pretty much the Jato thrust. Let me showcase it again. So uh, I can even just start the engines and then activate it when I want. There we go. Crazy amount of boost. I'm literally not pressing anything now. 
That's how much thrust it is. It's giving so much boost, it's pulling the nose up. Now it's ran out. It's going to start to level out again. And yeah, it works. I love it. It's super awesome and it's super handy. Definitely something, you know, I enjoy using in a creation. It's a good ability to have. I'm going to take off one more time look. I'm not going to use the boost this time. Because if you really wanted, you do have the option to save it. If I, if I wanted to save it, just in case I get into a bad situation. I'm flying normally now. Um, but if I need the boost... There we go. We're boosting. We have a temporary boost in the air. Probably not fast enough to get away from, you know, enemy jets. But <laughs> it's, it's cool that I have the option to do that if I didn't use it on takeoff. But that's enough showcasing the three different creations I have used this boosting technology in. Let's head over to Test Zone to explain how I did it. Okay, we're in Test Zone, and if you didn't guess already, it is literally just jet boosters, like space thrusters like this one, just stacked on top of each other, just as many as you can possibly fit within a build. I managed to fit a decent amount in the car build, and also a decent amount inside of the LF-22 Starling, and it's just a compact system like this, hidden away inside of the creation. Now, to make these boosts temporary, it is literally just timings. So if you go into the configuration, you can have a duration set. Obviously, you need to press show advanced, and then you can get all of this cool advanced stuff. I can have it literally last, what, five seconds, for example. And there's my boost. So here's my temporary creation. You know, I can drive normally, but if I want to activate my boost... It's temporary, it stops now, and, you know, that's just basic timings, basic logic. You can you can do a lot more logic to make it a, a lot more efficient, but that's, like, the basics there. But I'm not finished yet, because that is just normal jet thrust propulsion in Trailmakers. There is a trick to this. I am actually using a NOR gate, for example. There we go. I have a NOR gate, and I'm setting the output to 0 0.02. And an OR gate always has an active output until there's an, another input going into it to disable the active output. And because I'm doing this and putting a NOR gate in the thrusters at a really low like setting, 0.02, what it's actually doing is ramping up those boosters. Because these boosters have a little bit of like a ramp up acceleration. But by doing this trick, the boost is sudden. It's like it starts straight away. So I'm about to demonstrate in three, two, one, boost. Did you see how quick that activates? Honestly, this is a life hack. If you want to skip any like propulsion ramp up acceleration and have it instant, do this because it really works. And the last thing I'm doing to make this even more effective is doing the zero drag speed glitch. So essentially what this is doing is covering all of the pieces that have arrows. For example, if I get rid of this detachable block, you will see blocks have their own aerodynamics. So this is green. But with this trick, if you have a block in front of another block, it cancels out the drag here. So there is no drag going into this block because there is a block in the way. And with this trick, all I'm doing is detaching all of the blocks in front of the blocks to create a zone where there is no drag. That's why it is called the zero drag. It's really simple and easy to do. I think a lot of Trailmakers veterans have been doing this trick for years now. I have the detachable blocks set to scrap, so when I spawn them in, it it just gets rid of everything that's in the way. And now none of the forward pieces of my car have any drag. So that means when I activate my boost, there's less resistance. I have more power with the boost. And we can reach incredible speeds. That's also the reason why my LF-22 Starling was hitting the sound barrier because it was just going insanely fast with no drag. In terms of what propulsion you use, you can use pretty much any of the jet power propulsions. You might be thinking these rocket thrusters here are too small or too weak to give sufficient boost. Well, I'm actually using rocket engines inside. Rocket engines where I've disabled the smoke to get rid of the giant trail effect. Those are the main culprits here 
and giving me my boost abilities for this. They also have a null gate going into them to skip the ramp up. So if you just give it a few seconds here, they should be pretty much good to go now. As soon as I hit the boost, instant propulsion. I really wish I could have zero dragged this plane too, but you know, it's just too complex. If I did, this would go even faster on the boosting. But there you have it, guys. This has been my way of creating a more sufficient boost effect in Trailmakers using this neat little trick where we're just using a NOR gate to ramp up the speed and using logic to control the timings to make the boost seem a little bit more authentic. Instead of it being an infinite boost, you can have a temporary boost. If this video has helped inspire your trail mix creations and if you've been wanting to do a boost of your own, this is definitely a good way to do so. Make sure you leave a like on the video and and whilst you're at it, why not consider subscribing? But anyway, that's been enough from me. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.